Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Uh, ben and Isaac and I are setting up uh, this week uh, worth of paddocks for the bull, the bull mob. And uh, we just set in the last one here in this bottom. Uh, this is a pretty good sized bottom. I think there's 12 acres in here. It goes all the way to that tree line and it goes up on the hill there too to the right. And there's another bottom across that creek up there. But anyway, uh, we just brought the bulls in here um, yesterday. And of course there's no water, uh, no piped water on this farm. But I was just going to show you how we did this. So this is our last patty. <clears throat> So there's our there's our uh, geared reel. I'm gonna take it off of there if I don't get shocked. There we go. So I just wrap it around the hook, and then I find one of my fiberglass poles. Always find a fiberglass pole or whatever you're using for a post. It can't be steel. Uh, hopefully it's a timeless post um, or a good fiberglass post. Anyway, you reel, see how the, the reel hangs on there? So you got this plastic part here. I'm putting my fingers on That's not That's non-conductive. And you set it right over the top of that fiberglass. What that does, those, those uh, the sides, each one of these sides is in the middle of that, so it can't go like this, <laughs> sliding down your wire. If that reel slides down that wire, your bowls are not going to be where you put them. Because your wire is going to be on the ground. So I always find a post to terminate at. So we went over there across that paddock. And there's a barbed wire fence in that cedar line. We hooked on to that barbed wire fence with a plastic handle. That's non-conductive. And then I'm just going to walk you to the water. So, <clears throat> so that I just showed you Friday's paddock. And I'm walking through Thursday right now. Uh, we've got bull customers coming all this week. And so we want to keep the bulls uh, where we can get a lane built back to our corral uh, to load. Uh, we do bull sales a little bit different. You come by a bull here, you come out in the pasture. You come out and see what they're eating. You see how well they are, how well mannered they are when you walk into a whole mob of them. We're not afraid to bring customers into our bulls. Because we don't keep a bull that's nasty. You know, you get a bull that puts his head up and acts like he wants to take you out. That's a steer. You need to steer that thing. You don't want to use him on your herd. Because guess what he's going to give you? He's going to give you a whole calf crop of nasty calves that want to charge you, knock you down. Now you've got a whole mean herd of cows. Compliments of you keeping a nasty bull that should have had his testicles taken out. Don't allow those to pass those genes on. Okay, here's one that wasn't put on, right? <laughs> See, it's not on the pole, so it's going to slide down. There we go. I'll tell you what happened. The boys drove over that wire. They, it was on their right. They drove over it. I had them go ahead of me, and they're, they're going to show you all how we did the wire, but the water. Anyway, so now the bulls are on. Uh, that was... Friday, I walked through Thursday, and now I'm in Wednesday, right here. And we're just going to roll the wire up. There's no need to back fence because we're not going to be here over, you know, three to four days. So now I'm on Wednesday. I'm going to walk you up to the next, the next paddock. See, we've got a high tensile wire right here going the full length of this bottom, keeping them at that creek, that repairing area there. Now, we graze that repairing area as a paddock, but they're only on it for 12 hours. That's why it looks like it does. Does that look to you all like that's destroyed? Absolutely not. It's just beautiful. I mean, that catches rainwater. It's all full of forage and forbs. And the bulls, we grazed, we already grazed that, by the way. <laughs> it doesn't look like it, does it? That was grazed um, about three weeks ago. It sure doesn't look like it. This is another reason I like autumn ollies, a few of them. I don't want them taking over the farm. But let me tell you, on a hot summer day, that's a pretty good back rub for a bull or a cow to get underneath and knock the flies off their back. And they love eating the leaves. So it's forage. They get unruly, cut them off. We call that collarding. C-O-L-L-A-R-D-I-N-G, collarding. Coppice is when you cut them off flush with the ground. 
Okay, I'm in Wednesday here. So the boys are waiting for me. They're gonna explain how we did this water lane. So we've got a bunch of reels. I'm gonna let them explain what we did. I'm not gonna say another word. Oh, okay, so now we're on today's paddy. Um, this is their water lane that Ben and Isaac put in. And I'll start with Ben. You want to kind of explain what we're doing right here, and I'll let Isaac get in on some of this too. So this this strand of high tensile is what carries power to that entire section of the farm. Okay. So we couldn't just unhook this. And so there was a gate here, right? Yeah, there's a gate that hooks right in here. And we opened the gate? And we opened the gate, but now it's cold all the way there. So we need to figure out a way to have power over there, but still let them drink from the water. So are you telling me that we took a... Uh... Powerflex poly braid and it's 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 powering the whole farm. Yes, sir. We took the gate guys Ladies open the gate that killed the power to everything over there by Isaac But they tied a really good knot look at this Okay, it's just wrapped around there that was cold until Isaac and Ben Went over here and did this You have the uh, tester? Yeah, show, show, the show them. Show the difference. Show the difference. I just, so here, I just saw one of the bulls get shocked, and he definitely didn't like it. So. Over here, you want to show them? Yep. So this is a feeder coming from the fencer. So your KV is what you're looking at. You're at 6.5. Woo, 6,500. And zero amps, folks. Zero amps. Zero amps mean there's there's no load on there. There's not a steel anything touching that wire. So the bulls get six thousand five hundred volts right when they to touch the that nose. on the nose. <laughs> so yeah. how did y'all power that up? You wrapped it over here. Yep. We wrapped it over. The okay. So now you yeah we'll go ahead. This. Let's go ahead and test this. So you got six thousand five hundred on the source side. How much voltage is that poly braid bringing over here, Isaac? It's bringing. It's only losing like. 1300. 1, yeah, 1300. So, folks, we're still at 5200, and there's over a mile of fence. Well, with all kinds of poly. With all right, kinds yeah. of poly fastened on it. Now, I would not recommend this being a long term solution, but you can use poly braid to carry voltage for a short time. Just make sure you wrap it pretty good. Yeah. So, then, Isaac, what did we do down in here? So, this way, we just ran. Ran the poly wire down to this creek we've got down here. Um, Turn around top. Yeah, yeah, to this creek down here. And we've got um, posts in the creek making like an apron for them to drink out of. Okay. And so, Ben, what, what did you do to each one of those posts to make sure they didn't come out? It's, it's, real, it's real sandy. And so if you were to just stick a post in, it'll just come right back up again. So you take, thank God there's all these rocks here. Because Let's go look and see what you did there. We'll just... So if you just stick it in that sand, it's going to pop out. Yeah. So oh, yeah. On every one, almost, there's a, a rock. Big old rock. There's a rock on that one. Yep. There's a rock on that one, on that one, all the way around. Good. So it doesn't pull out. So they come in here, get them a good drink. They got a nice, solid place to stand on these rocks. Um, they're not going to be wading in their knees in sand and mud. And Folks, then, look at that water. Yeah. I, I I, yeah. I, you know, uh, I had an old timer tell me, folks, I'll share this with you. <laughs> he said, as long as water is running over a rock, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know why, you know, but he said, water running over a rock, Greg, it's good for you. Drink it. I'm like, <laughs> but, there, but sir, there's a cow peeing up there in front. No matter. It's running over a rock. It's, it's good to, it's good to go. <laughs> But the bulls come in here, folks, and they don't spend any time here. You know why? There's nothing to eat. There's their drink. Their strip is back there where we just moved the wire a while ago. And uh, so, yeah, this is our water aim point for the next... Uh, Almost a week. Yeah, for a week. For a week. And then, folks, we won't be back here for 45 to 60 days, all depending on how much rain we get. And how quickly this pasture right here recovers. But they're not tearing this up. 
Oh, they've I mean, already drank down here too. We've yep. seen them come down. Yeah, they've already been drinking out of here. Folks, one thing I will recommend when you make a water lane like this, put your post a little closer together. Um, guys, how far apart are those? Uh, 10, 12 feet. 10, you say 10 to 12 feet? Yeah. Yeah. Some of these are six feet. Six feet yeah. yeah. So where you get pressure, folks, don't be a pressure being a lot of animals coming in here. Don't be afraid to put your uh, your uh, post a little closer together. Folks, I'm going to meet you two back over at the mineral feeder. Okay. And I'll see you in just a minute. So we're going to go look at the uh, mineral feeder where we placed it for the bowls. Look at the trampling we're getting in here. So, in the morning. In the morning. In the morning, I want you guys to show what we're going to do. How are those bowls going to get water when we put them out there? They're actually going to be grazing clear on the other side of that cedar grove. What's this all about right here? Hold on. I got to get close because you got to talk toward the camera, guys. I got guys complaining. They can't hear what you're talking about. So in the morning, we're going to take this reel, roll it back, uh, maybe what, 100, 100 feet? 100 uh, feet, yards, yep. And hook it back on on the other side down there where we tied onto that um, with the poly wire just so that they've got, this is their lane. This is their lane, so they can't go back on what they were on yesterday. Right, they got, we're back fencing them. And so we've got bull customers coming in the morning. We'll have those bulls secluded on about, what, two acres over there? Yep. So we can go in and sort out the bull we want. And this lane you see right here, we're going to have that where it goes all the way back to the corral. So... It's a good ways. It's a good jag, isn't it? What's the importance of when you when you sort one out and take him to the crowd? What do you want to do, folks? Bring a buddy with them. At least one. Why do, why do you want to bring a buddy with them? They work so much better. When you single them out, they freak out and they get all anxious because they're herd animals. They're used to being with, with the herd. And so if you have at least, at least two, three works good, too. Yeah, they just think they're going on a paddock move when you have a couple of them with them. And yeah. most of the time, they'll just walk all the way to the corral. No big deal. Yeah. If you get one by himself, he kind of gets a little nervous, doesn't he? Liable yeah. to jump, jump the fence or yeah. the hot wire. And what do you do with the extra buddy once you load the other bull that you want? What do you do with him? Run him back. Run him back to the herd. Yeah, he, he's more than happy oh, to get yeah. with, back with his buddies. It's way easier to bring him back than it is <laughs> to take him away. Yeah. They know where uh, the rest of their, their, their buddies are. That's where having three comes in handy. You bring three there and you bring two back, so they're never by yes. themselves at all. So. Yes, I like bringing more than even two. Mm -hmm. You know, it just seems like the, the more the merrier. It's kind of like a party. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just more comfortable. Okay, so now we've got this reel rolled up, and they're against that one over there that I'm pointing at. What happens to that reel? After we go into the next pattern, yep. we'll roll that back and um, probably come over here to the, do the same thing. Yep. Folks, we got some really nice shade right there. Bunch of trees in that corner, so... As we roll each one of these rolls back, we can actually back fence them with shade, with water. And folks, there's no pressure to rise water here. This is just a creek. Natural flow, um, very easy peasy. And we did all this with poly wire, I'm sorry, poly braid. This is the mixed metal, which is the best wire made. That's made by PowerFlex. Mixed metal, so you got six steel, three copper, and what kind of post is that, guys? O'Brien. What was that? O'Brien post. O'Brien. Y'all a believer in O'Brien's? Oh, man, none, none of these other other posts that just wh whoever designed them didn't didn't really use them very much. Yeah. That's, they probably that's set up say. five or six of them in the backyard and were like, yeah, it works. They didn't set up five hundred <laughs> every day. Well, uh, Isaac, you got in and Ben both on driving those timeless posts the other day. How did those work out? They work pretty good. They work pretty... I wouldn't want to drive those for temporary. Yeah, but it makes a good permanent thing. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Super easy. What do you think about people that are just starting out and they're thinking about using a steel post for their high tensile fence? Don't do it. That's well, why? Have, why wouldn't you do that? Home. You got all those plastic insulators. <laughs> a deer hits them, breaks the plastic insulators, hits your fences on the um, the the uh, steel post, and you've got like. 20 ground rods just sitting there. Yeah. yeah. Your fence is grounded. And so everybody out. says that a timeless post, well, you know, that's a, oh my gosh, that's a, you know, five, six dollar bill. Well, what's a steel post cost you? And an insulator. And, and an insulator. you got to fix it when it breaks. Yeah. At a certain point, then it's like, well, I've already spent 
the amount of money I would with a timeless post and it just be sitting there. Yep. Minding its own business. No, no maintenance required. So can you imagine the nightmare of having a whole farm fence to a steel post? I couldn't sleep at night. No way. No. Cause what's going to happen? A deer's going to hit that. He's going to bust your insulator off that steel post. And that's where you get people saying, but Greg, I tried, I tried that electric fence crap. It doesn't work. And you go out there and look at their farm and they got steel posts everywhere. Yeah. Absolutely. You're right. It doesn't work. Folks, use timeless posts, step-ins like this, terrigate reel like this, get the right stuff. Uh, we just had a guy come by the other day, and he had a, a really kind of state of the run. He was kind of bragging about his reel and his, and his wire, and it, was all, it wasn't the good stuff. No, it's definitely not the area to skimp on costs. No. If you're going to do it, you might as well do it right because you're just going to spend more money otherwise. Folks, uh, you guys, we use this stuff every day. Every day. Every day. And is it holding up? It's perfect. It's perfect. We, we were talking the other day about there's certain core things that you want to invest in, especially starting out, like just get good quality fence, good quality reels and wire, and that's just like, the, that's what you use every day. So you might as well buy by quality and it'll last. What about, when you're talking about quality, guys, what do you think about quality genetics? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's important too. It's important too. It's important too for sure. We just moved those bowls a while ago, and there was uh, 65, 70 animals in there, and they walked up to Ben and Isaac, and they're just standing there watching them as they rolled the paddock back. And they patiently walked through into the new paddock. Nothing. No, nothing got freaked nothing's out. Nothing's rearing its head. No. Nope. Run around, kick the bucket. Folks, life is too short to have stupid animals. Yeah, your life might be short if you have stupid animals. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good that's a good quote man i have to remember that one all right let's go up to the mineral feeder i'll meet you guys over there all right so we're on the water lane look at the carbon they're laying on the ground there's 70 bulls using this they've only been on here for one day 24 hours they didn't eat it all but you know I don't want them to eat at all. I want them to trample some. I got, I got other critters out here. I got other critters, billions of them. And they're down in the soil. And they're trying to build me more grass. And that's why I've got to feed them. You got to feed them soil critters. You can't starve them to death. If you put it all through a cow, Ian Mitchell Ennis, my good friend that helps him with our grazing school, he's always said, Greg, Sometimes there's more value to a blade of grass if it's actually trampled on the ground, if it's trampled on the ground versus consumed by a cow. So if you're trying to build soil, sometimes it's better to trample it. It's going to pay you back. You think this is paying us back? Look at that. Folks, this field has never seen an ounce of lime or fertilizer. And that's because you can't get anything in here. I mean, there's a dip here. Well, you just can't get a truck. You couldn't get a truck in here. You can barely get a four-wheeler in here. So that field is just trampling. Feeding the soil. Letting the earthworms do your work for you. And we're, okay, so here's the mineral feeder. <clears throat> this is our 16-hole mineral feeder that the bulls are consuming right now. We just got a load of mineral in this morning. It's the first mineral we bought this year. Look at that. So the bowls get to go through and select exactly what's missing. Guys, can you give a list of what those are? So you got your K, which is your potassium. Um, S, S, I. Silicone? Yeah, I don't know what about those ones. They don't eat a lot of that. No. Um, iodine, CA. Calcium. Uh, CB. Magnesium. Magnesium. Uh, uh, phosphorus. Uh, what is that? B, B something? Oh, no, TB. TB, that's a vitamin, yeah. and OH. OH. So, folks, the OH and the CB, the OH is actually, I'll get it wrong, but one's an alkaline neutralizer, and the other one is an acid neutralizer. So, in the cow's gut is not balance pH that cow can come to this tub and actually balance her room by just taking a little bit of what she needs 
If you can keep the pH of your cow's gut at seven, they perform, they cycle, they breed back, they don't get sick. What's this side? CL, they're, they're empty on that one. All right. What is that? N A V sel selenium. PC selenium. Two selenium. Some salt. Some TA. Some, yeah. And yeah, that's basically it. But again, so as the animals select through that box, I just had a guy tell me the day, Greg, cows aren't that smart. They don't select what they need. <laughs> I'm like, excuse me. They're out there on this pasture every day. If you spend any time with your cows at all, go out there and spend an hour sitting on a bucket watching them eat. And then you tell me they don't know what they need. That's like saying, you know, I don't like uh, a good steak. Yes, I do. <laughs> and so do animals. Animals know what they need. And so they can come in here and select exactly what they need. They poop out 85% back out onto the paddock. You were saying about the pH. Yes. And uh, when their pH is balanced in their gut, yes. what are they dropping on the land? They're, they're dropping exactly. balanced uh, manure. So exactly. So neutralizing your farm. Absolutely. So over time, the cattle actually don't consume as much mineral because the plants have it in them from here because they're pooping it back on the paddock. We know we're low in phosphorus on this farm. So the cattle will eat some of that phosphorus and put it out here on the land. It's going to grow you plants that have the phosphorus in there. So it just makes sense. Ian calls this his traveling laboratory. You know, he's got two or 3,000 cows going across the landscape. And now I think Ian was down to like three minerals. He's been on it a lot longer than we have. But uh, I like the program Free Choice, Minor Free Choice Enterprises. Just Google it, FCE. You can find out about it. Pretty good mineral program. And with that, I'm going to sign off. It's getting warm out here, and we still got some fence building to do today. So everyone... We'll see you down the road. When you go, when you exit, uh, hit that like and uh, subscribe button. Y'all take care.